Hey there, nation, and welcome to the show where we help you to play miniatures wargaming on a budget. And as I, Commander Chiefs Gamer, back with another episode of Way of the Underhive. This series is dedicated to helping brand new players to Necromunda build their starting rosters and learn more about the game mechanics of their favorite gangs. And on this episode, we will discuss playing a House Catalyst Outcast gang in your campaigns of Necromunda Ashways. We will discuss the gang's strengths and weaknesses, their different fighters, their playstyle, and provide critical information that you can use in your campaign. And at the same time, we'll also include a 1400 point starting roster that you can use to use in your very first campaign of the Ash Waste. So with that being said, let's go ahead and talk about the strengths and weaknesses of playing a Noble House Delegation Gang in your upcoming campaign of Necromunda Ash Wastes. All right, so let's talk about the strengths of playing a Delegation Outcast Gang. So potentially, it's one of the most powerful starting gangs that you can actually have in a campaign. And the reason why is because the fighters that make up your delegations. Regardless if you're playing Criminal, Merchant, or uh, Noble House uh, Delegations, they usually all start off with excellent equipment and skills right from the start. In some cases, they have some really good stats, and they have some very powerful special rules that can make them really uh, advantageous and very competitive in an Ash Waste campaign. At the same time, you can also take advantage of weird disciplines now because of the Book of the Outcast release those weird disciplines you can even customize your fighters even further and in addition to adding vehicles with heavier weapon options and different boons and weapon gears from those vehicles could also give your delegation gang a huge advantage out in the ashways of necromunda and these are some of the advantages and strengths of actually playing a delegation outcast gang all right, so perhaps the biggest weakness of actually playing a delegation gang that's an outcast gang is that you cannot take any alliances whatsoever. If you decide to use the delegation as the core of your gang, no alliances uh, are available to you. So for example, if you're a merchant guild uh, delegation gang, you can't take criminal alliances or noble house alliances and vice versa for all the other ones as well. So that's one of the biggest weaknesses of playing a delegation gang. If you really like using alliances to help your gang out, this might not be the one for you. However though, like I said before in the strengths, it does give you a leg up in the actual beginning of a campaign because you have better fighters, better equipment, and better skills. Now one of the weaknesses of this game of course is that if you decide to play WYSIWYG, WYSIWYG which is an acronym for what you see is what you get type of gangs this can be quite pricey in my opinion and the reason why is because for example if you were to play a nautican siphoning uh delegation for example as the core of your gang and you want to buy the forge world miniatures in order to fill that gang those four world miniatures can be quite expensive so because of that I would suggest looking for cheaper alternatives or convert your own in most cases. A lot of these uh, delegations have not been manufactured yet, so you could possibly do that, but that's just something you might want to take into account. Me, of course, I would never actually do that. I would just convert my own or find alternate ways to get cheaper miniatures, and that's the thing I would keep in mind when I would be playing a delegation gang. At the same time, these gangs are also very expensive to field in terms of credits. Uh, these delegations, like I said, have a lot of skills, a lot of weapons, better stats, and you're going to pay for those. Uh, for example, I think the cheapest of the delegations it starts off at like 540 credits, I believe. Uh, so because of that, it's going to be very, very expensive for you to fill these fighters, but that's the way it goes. And lastly, probably the biggest weakness of actually playing an outcast delegation gang is that you do have to be aware of the balance bad wagon. A lot of balance bad wagon types will scream overpowered or game breaking or unfair and so on and so forth. But of course, once again, just ignore those immaturity of those players, drink the salt of their tears, and just use that to power yourself and destroying your enemies. So these are some of the strengths and weaknesses involved of playing a delegation gang. Alright, so when it comes to delegation gangs, once again, you get to pick from merchant guilds, criminal syndicates, or noble houses uh, and use those delegations you get from those alliances to form the core of your gang. Leaders also get archetypes and affiliations depending on what delegation you choose. Also, champions also get archetypes as well, so that allows for a lot of customization for your different uh, members of your delegations depending on the affiliations and the archetypes that you choose. Now, once again, remember, archetypes depend on what kind of primary and secondary skills your champions and your leaders receive, while affiliations... Uh, usually determine what kind of weapons and equipment you can get from the starting list, if not from the trading post as well. At the same time, the nice thing about these delegations is that the members of those delegations gain experience and they can purchase weapons and equipment over time, just like any other gang. So that part is really, really cool. And once again, I have to make sure I stress this a lot. Uh, if you decide to take a delegation outcast gang, you cannot make any alliances whatsoever in the future. So just be aware when that actually happens and keep that in mind. So when it comes to the actual noble houses of Necromunda and your delegation gangs, you actually have six different delegations you can actually choose from to form the very core of your gang. And those delegations are the House Catalyst Carnival, that's your first option, the House Ulanti Court Advisors, House Grain Military Attaché, House Co-Iron Ministorium Delegation, House Renlo Auditing Conclave, or the House Tai Omioto Coven. 
So all six of the noble houses are available for delegation to use for the core for your noble outcast gang. And pretty much it just kind of depends on what you want to use uh, and the various things you want to play and how you want to create the aesthetic. For your outcast noble gang so that being said now that we're done talking about the delegations you can choose from let's go ahead and talk about the specific core of your gang for the house that you choose on the next slide all right, so let's go ahead and talk about the House Catalyst Carnival. This is going to be the delegation that forms the core of your gang at 320 credits. And this is a pretty interesting delegation. It's a good balance between long range as well as close combat in terms of equipment. You have access to infrared sights, photo goggles, mastercrafted long rifles for 35 credits, and mastercrafted power swords at 65 credits as well. You also have some interesting game mechanics with Artistry of Murder, which basically means that all of the mass killer attacks have the shock trait as well as effect terror which is the special rule associated with the mind frame as well and at the same time on a more personal note stylistically this could be one of the coolest gangs to actually play especially as an outcast gang because you could have a circus themed carnival of evil crazy jester insane clown build of your dreams and have your gang look like something out of the joker from batman if you wanted to which would make this gang very stylistically really awesome and really bright and colorful so that is the advantages of taking a house catalyst carnival delegate delegation for your gang. So first of all, let's talk about the Mask Killer. This fighter is going to cast 245 credits, and let's talk about their stats real quick. So they have movement of characteristic of 6 inches, 3 plus weapon skill, 3 plus ballistic skill, 3 strength and toughness, 2 wounds, 2 initiative, 3 attacks. They have 7 leadership, 5 cool, 6 willpower, as well as 7 intelligence. And this will be the leader of your gang as well. Now the Mask Killer is equally good at close combat or at shooting with that beautiful 3 up ballistic skill and weapon skill, also 3 attacks as well. Now if you decide to do a more shooting build for your mass, care, uh, mass killer I suggest you go with a gunslinger archetype if you plan on focusing more on close combat I was to choose the survivor archetype for that fighter now your fighter does come with mesh armor infrared sight as well as photo goggles and you get to choose either a mastercraft and long rifle and last pistol or a mastercraft power sword and last pistol for that one as well the mastercraft and long rifle is excellent for a shooting build while the mastercraft and power sword is excellent for close combat now the max killer does come with the artistry murder special rule which means all their attacks have the shock trait to make them just a little bit more deadly at the same time they have dodge now dodge is not very useful but artistry Art mission murderers is giving shock traits to your range attacks as well as your close combat attacks really allows you to re-roll flesh wounds so that way you can get serious injuries or maybe out of action results which is a serious instant win for that fighter now when it comes to your skills depending on what you choose either a shooting or a close combat build i would say fast shot or random blows would be extremely useful for those builds because the fast shot lets you make your shooting actions into simple actions and close combat does exactly the same thing with your close combat attacks you really can't go wrong in either way now let's talk about the Mind Freight. This guy's going to cost you 75 credits and is going to be one of the gangers in your gang. And the stats for this guy has got 6 inch movement, 4 plus weapon skill, 5 plus plus skill. They have 3 strength and toughness, 1 wound, 4 plus for initiative, 2 attacks, 9 leadership, 10 cool, 5 plus for willpower, as well as 8 plus for intelligence. Now when it comes to the Mind Freight, many, peepers, many, many people, play, people and players see the Mind Freight as a liability due to its infectious terror rules. Now if you're not familiar with how the infection terror rules works what ends up happening is if the mind frame becomes pinned all fighters friend or foe within six inches can become pinned if they fail a cool check around the mind freight now if the mind freight fails a nerve test then all fighters friend and foe within six inches must take a nerve test or become broken as well now this used to be a huge problem because the mind freight had to stay pretty close with the rest of your gang but in the ash waste this problem is solved with one single piece of war gear which is the wasters dirt bike purchase the wasters dirt bike for your mind freight asap what it does it gives them the mounted condition and also adds a movement to the characteristics you can put your uh, mind freight out in the point all by himself away from the rest of your gang and he's not going to cause any harm whatsoever now at the same time the mind freight does come with paired flails which is perfect for using by the ride by rule because flails do have the uh, versatile trait which means you can use ride by rules and attack your enemies on the dirt bike using those paired flails at the same time they also have the berserker skill which gives them an additional attack and close combat when they charge forward which is perfect because that motorcycle is going to get them in there get stuck in and cause all kinds of problems so now that we're done talking about the mind freight let's go and talk about the other fighters available to your gang 
All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the Under a Hive Outcast Champion real quick. For these gangs, these guys cost 60 credits apiece, and for their stats, they have 5 inch movement, 3 plus weapon skill, 4 plus plus skill. They have 3 strength, 3 toughness. They also have 2 wounds, they have 4 initiative, 1 attack. They have 6 leadership, 7 cool, 8 willpower, as well as 8, as well as eight intelligence. So let's go on and talk about these guys real quick. So when it comes to the Under Hive Outcast Champions, they're very versatile, and the reason why is because their stats are pretty much mediocre. Now that's both a good and a bad thing. While might be bad because they can't excel at any one given thing whether it's shooting or close combat it does allow them to be able to equip a large variety of weapons and fulfill any role that you need them to fulfill within your gang as well now when it also comes to your guys's under hive outcast champions archetypes of course are very very important but the problem with these guys though is that their archetypes are very limited for their skills in my opinion for example they have five different archetypes they can choose from but they only have one primary skill and each of those archetypes followed by two uh, secondaries so for example if you're to take the brawler archetype uh, brawn would be your primary with ferocity and leadership as your secondaries if you were a gunslinger archetype shooting would be your primary with agility as well as leadership as your secondaries for a survivor archetype ferocity would be your primary followed by combat and leadership for your secondaries for mastermind cunning would be your primary with leadership and savant as your secondaries and of course for weird archetypes your psychic disciplines would be your primary followed by cunning and leadership as your secondaries unfortunately for the champion there are no archetypes where combat is a primary so that is kind of limiting on what you can do so you won't be getting any skills really to increase your combat abilities but better weapons and equipment choices could probably help out with that as well now when it comes to their equipment and weapons they can purchase pretty much anything they want to off the training post so long as it's within the rarity value of eight on the training post so they are kind of limited to some of their choices but the reason why that is the case is because you can take one champion for every three hive scum in your gang so for example if you have uh six hive scum in your gang you can take two champions if you've got nine hive scum you can get three champions and etc so that's basically where the trade-off kind of comes in and then finally, of course, we have our Underhive Outcast Hive Scum, which is your typical uh, ganger and juvie level fighter for your gang. These guys cost 30 credits apiece. For their stats, they have 5 inch movement, 4 plus weapon skill, and blizzard skill, 3 strength and toughness. They have 1 wound, 4 plus for initiative, 1 attack. They have 8 plus for leadership, cool, willpower, and intelligence. And for their skill access, when they become a specialist, their primary is cunning, with ferocity as their secondary. Now, Underhive Scum, Outcast Scum, they're very mediocre, okay? But because of that, they're also very cheap to field. And even though they have very mediocre stats, they count as both gangers and juvie level fighters for your gang. And because their stats are still so mediocre, they can fill many different roles in your gang. You can equip them as shooters, close combat, you can use them as support, you can use them as suicide bombers, especially now that you can also put them on waster dirt bikes. They make great pursuers on uh, waster dirt bikes, for example. So there's a variety of things you can do with these guys to fulfill pretty much any role that you want to. And plus, if you decide to make them to a delegation gang, you can also take better weapons equipment from the delegation lists as well. So that's another cool thing about uh, Outcast Hive Scum as well. Now, unfortunately, you cannot start your campaign with an Outcast Specialist, so that part is kind of sad. Uh, almost every single gang can have a Specialist except for uh, Out, uh, Outcast, so that part is kind of sad. But that's the kind of the trade-off. Yes, you can't get those Specialists, but... Uh, right at the start, but you'll eventually you have so many guys you can choose from and plus your delegations get to fill those roles anyways So it's not that big of an issue. So that makes up your guys outcast hive scum All right, so let's talk about our gang list I like to call this the house catalyst nitro circus gang which is gonna cost you 1,400 credits first of all you have your mask killers gonna cost you 245 credits We're taking the gunslinger archetype as well as mesh armor a master crafted long rifle as well as a last pistol We have infra sights as well as photo goggles They have the artistry of murder dodge skill as well as the fast shot ability So that way they can shoot twice with that master crafted long rifle Then we're gonna have two outcast champions one's gonna cost you 120 credits This character's got the gunslinger archetype. They got mesh armor as well as a master craft and long rifle last pistol as well as the fast shot skill and your second outcast champ is going to cost you 105 credits this person's got the brawler archetype they got mesh armor as well as a chain sword a stub gun as well as bull charge giving them plus one to their strength as well as knockback now you also have the mind frayed the mind frayed is going to cost you 140 credits this fighter's got mesh armor a pair of flails as well as a waster's dirt bike they also got infectious terror as well as the berserker skill and then you have two outcast scum a scum number one and two both cost 135 credits apiece both are equipped exactly the same both have flails as well as blasting charges and both have wasters dirt bikes then you have outcast scum number three and four 
They are also clicked exactly the same at 50 credits a piece with last guns as well as stub guns. And then you have two more outcast scum, outcast scum number five and six. Both of them are gonna cost 60 credits a piece with chain swords as well as stub guns. And then last you're gonna have two scum racers. Scum racers number one and two are equipped exactly the same at 150 credits a piece. Both will have light custom vehicles. Both will have grenade launchers on those vehicles. Both will also have transport beds as well. Now let's talk about the gang overview on the next slide. All right, so for the gang overview, this gang, the Nitro Circus, is a very fast-moving gang consisting of light custom vehicles for transport as well as wasters dirt bikes for harassing your enemy. To defeat your enemy, you will rely upon a combination of long-range shooting as well as close quarters battle. Now, assaulting your enemy in close quarters battle and boarding enemy vehicles will be the key feature of this gang. This gang will consist of three fire teams. You have one support fire team, one assault fire team, and one special psychological warfare fire team. Now, your support fire team will consist of your Mass Killer, as well as Outcast Champion number one, as well as Outcast Scum number three, Outcast Scum number four, and Scum Racer number one. Now, this fire team's job is to provide covering fire at a distance. The fire team is mounted on Scum Racer number one's light vehicle, which will circle around the opposition, allowing its crew to open fire with their mastercrafted long rifles and last guns. You'll get four mastercrafted long rifle shots, as well as two last gun shots every turn, which will be enough to snipe at enemy targets, especially at high value targets as well. At the same time, Scum Racer number one will also provide suppressive fire. With their grenade launcher as well. Now, assault fire number your assault fire team consists of your outcast champion number two, outcast scum number five, outcast scum number six, and scum racer number two. This fire's job, the uh, fire team's job, is to either dismount and assault enemy infantry or board enemy vehicles in close quarters battle. The fire team is mounted on scum racer number two's light vehicle, which will circle around the opposition, allowing them to close the distance with their enemies. Now, they're all equipped with chain swords, will give them plus one to hit in close combat, as well as stub guns for short range shooting. At the same time, scum racer number two will be able to provide suppressive fire with their grenade launcher firing frag grenades at dismounted fighters or crack grenades at enemy vehicles. Now our third fire team is your psychological warfare fire team which consists of your mind frayed as well as outcast scum number one and outcast scum number two. Now this fire's gene job is a race towards the enemy as quickly as possible in order to disrupt them. The mind freight takes point staying at least six inches away from any other friendly fighters in case infectious terror is triggered. The mind freight's job is to close with the enemy, engage in close combat, or perform ride by to inflict injuries. At the same time, their infectious terror special rule should kick in, affecting your enemies. So if they get pinned, your enemies will become pinned. If they get to break their nerve, your enemies will break their nerve, which will allow you, of course, an opening to exploit. Meanwhile, Outcast Scum and Outcast Scum number two zip around the battlefield, lobbing blasting charges at will. Hopefully this will cause nerve tests for your enemies with the mind phrase number two, a minus two cool penalty and cause fighters to break. Meanwhile, scum number one and two will also provide ride bias with their flails and finish off enemies with their coup de gras. And that pretty much makes up what I like to call the house catalyst nitro circus gang at 1,400 points. So in conclusion, Noble House Delegation Outcast Gangs are some of the great ways to add some more diversity to a campaign. Uh, you have a lot of powerful options with your Noble House Delegations. You can also make some pretty interesting gangs by throwing in Outcast Hive Scum as well as Outcast Champions. And now with you have the access to vehicles, you can even make more crazy combinations out there. In fact, in my opinion, adding these Delegation Outcast Gangs is a great way to add a lot of diversity into an already diverse game set with all kinds of different gangs and builds. And it just adds to the diversity and the creativity of players in order to create newer gangs that throw out there in the campaigns. So with that being said, pick your favorite noble house and head out there into the ashways to reclaim your glory and your honor and to rise back up to the noble ranks of the noble houses. Just as always, of course, watch out for your balanced bandwagon guys because those guys will always gripe and complain and always find something wrong with the game and try to blame you for the reasons why they can't play so well. So with that being said, feel free to comment, like, and or subscribe. Your guys' input is invaluable to us as always. I'll just check us out on Facebook Facebook, Instagram, as well as blogger.com for all the latest, greatest hobby news related to this channel. That's good for this one, guys. We'll catch you guys next one. Peace out and stay classy.